Hello everyone and welcome back to Do We Know Them? I'm Lily Marston here with Jesse Smiles and we are here for episode 14. We are. I wish I could come with a better tood, but I'm really feeling kind of spicy today, Lily. I can't lie. Yeah, she came on um, a little angry on because, uh, you know, if, if you're new here, we it looks like we're in the same room, but we aren't. We're not even in the same state. No, no, we're not. Um, so she came into our Zoom a little hot and heavy. So we have a multitude of topics to talk about today. We definitely don't have a shortage of things we, we want to get into. But this Adam Levine affair situation has me seething. I, I, am I think it so has upset. the whole internet seething, to be honest. It's a special... Okay, so I am a married woman. Do we just get straight into it today? Are we going to do like a long intro? Yeah, or should we just do, go Let's for just it? do it. Adam Levine, okay. topic number one. Well, if you don't know, Adam Levine was outed for having an affair. So he has been married to a gorgeous... Victoria's Perfect Secret model. Woman. <laughs> Literal Victoria's Secret yes. model for since 2014. Bahati Prinsloo. They have children together. You know, those things you create out of just pure love. Not even. They just announced they're expecting their third child together. I heard about this because the video, the TikTok that this girl, so her name is Sumner Stroh and she's an Instagram influencer. What a name. She's like an Instagram influencer, OnlyFans influencer, whatever. Her TikTok came up on my For You page. Let's play it really quick because I want to give full context before I just fucking go ham. And I honestly haven't watched all of them, but I just want to preface this with how insane is TikTok that I feel like it takes things almost like a step past viral that it's like for sure people that have nothing to do with celebrity culture like they don't even care this might come up on their for you page i feel like it just broadcasts yeah. it to a whole new audience that's even bigger than the like world of tabloid news that has gotten us to this point yeah things can go viral on youtube but it just happened it's like a bullet on tiktok and it's so easy for people to reshare it and stuff and comment on it and you don't even have to be an established influencer for the algorithm rhythm to push you That's you can it, literally be someone that has no content and then just be like oh i had an affair with adam levine and everyone's That's watching it shit. because i think if, if like i just random i mean bad example but if someone just with zero followers made a youtube video and said that they had an affair with adam levine i think it would take probably weeks unless someone picked it up and thought it was super legit why would yeah. anyone give it the time of day somehow tiktok i feel like things get legs and wow it's insane. So I was scrolling my For You page and this Sumner girl comes on and I just see her saying that she's going to rip the Band-Aid off and let's just watch her. <sighs> rip it off. I'm just going to rip the Band-Aid off because I've retaken this like 10 times now. Essentially, I was having an affair with a man who's married to a Victoria's Secret model. At the time, you know, I was young. I was naive. And I mean, quite frankly, I feel exploited. I wasn't in the scene like... I am now, um, so I was definitely very easily manipulated. Maroon 5 is practically elevator music at this point, so I'm sure you know who Adam Levine is. Um, but Adam and I were seeing each other for about a year. After I stopped talking to him over you know, a period of months, this is uh, how he came back into my life. He said, okay, serious question. I'm having another baby, and if it's a boy, I really uh, wanna name it Sumner. You okay with that? Dead serious. Um, I was like, I'm in hell. Like, I have to be in hell at this point. I mean, my morals were unknowingly compromised. I was completely manipulated. I wanted to handle this privately. I never wanted to come forward because obviously I know the implications that come with doing what I do, making money the way I do, and being an Instagram model. Um, so being tied to a story like this, it's like, I know the stereotypes. I had sent some screenshots recklessly to a few friends I thought I trusted, and one of them had attempted to sell to a tabloid. Um, <laughs> So here I am. I cannot. Mm. I, okay. I have a few mm. questions. Okay, you first, Lily, because I, I got lots to say. Okay, so I'm not going to sit here and pretend that there isn't some kind of power dynamic at play, celebrity, blah, blah, blah. She gets caught up, wrapped yep. up in it. I'm unsure how the child thing is manipulation. I mean, it's gross, but I don't understand why that suddenly was why she needed to take things public. Well, okay. So there's multiple layers to that element of it. I don't think she's talking about that specific like baby name thing being the manipulation. I think now she's relating the entire, like she's talking about the whole thing uh -huh. where she's like, I just feel manipulated by having ever, you know, 
had that relationship with him, which I have been approached by famous men. You know, I remember there was a very famous basketball player that was like, hey, come stay at this hotel by my, like, I'm gonna be playing in Orlando. And I was like, the fuck? No, like, but he's a very fucking famous, but like, it's just, I understand what she's saying, where even if you're an influencer, it is obviously exciting when someone who's a celebrity yeah. wants to talk to and you. And it's like Adam Levine is definitely like, he has like a sex symbol kind of vibe to him. Right. He's not like a creepy exactly. old, I mean, to me now he looks like a creepy old guy because of this, but like he's not a creepy yeah. old guy. He's a good looking guy, whatever. So I understand what she's saying in the sense of she's someone who was an up and coming influencer, whatever the fuck that means. Like she liked that attention yeah, it's like coming Adam from Levine a famous wants person. to talk to me and he thinks I'm hot. Oh my God. Yeah. There's that power dynamic for sure. And we're not here to pretend that doesn't exist. However, I want to say before I get into anything, because I know people are going to come for my ass, both of them are at fault. Yes. Both of them played their part in this. He is completely the one that mainly owes his wife the respect and his children the respect. When there's a mistress and that person doesn't know that someone is married or that person's like feeding them lies and saying, oh, I'm separated from my wife. And you know how the usual mm -hmm. affairs go. I cannot fault those people the same way I would fault the partner. But this like, girl's it's like never come out and been like, I didn't know he was married. And like, I mean, a quick oh, Google no, search no, would have no. told you that he's married. Everyone knows. Like they had or a very public relationship. Or just maybe visiting his Instagram. Yeah, yeah where he, they post pictures together. You didn't go into this place. Blind. No, at all. Like, it literally makes me so angry because the lack of respect from Adam here is so disgusting. But before I even go further into it, I just want to say, I think that she's being disingenuous in the way she's presenting it because she's very much so presenting herself as a victim mm -hmm. of manipulation, saying, I was very young, I was naive. She was 21. That's not very young. I feel like if anything, it's an excuse. It's not, or it's it's not an excuse. It's an explanation for why she would have been okay with it at the time and why her morals would have driven her in that direction. She knew it was wrong in the 100%. moment. 100%. I just fault Adam so much more because whenever people are like, of course. she stole her man, referring to like his wife, I think that's the stupidest thing ever because I'm like, I would hope that if you were married and someone came, like presented themselves to you and been like, hello, I'm going to be your sex slave now. They would still say no. They both did things that were wrong in different ways apart from the affair. Yeah. So like they both had their part in the affair and they both hold different levels of fault. We can argue that all day. But her bringing this public is a whole other layer that she is single-handedly responsible for. Even if it is true that her friend was a piece of shit and wanted to sell the screenshots to TMZ or whatever, that is your fucking fault. You're taking these screenshots of something that you know is wrong. You're handing them out like a candy on Halloween. And using it as like a bragging thing that you're showing your friends to be like, look, I'm messaging Adam Levine. Oh, a hundred percent. A hundred percent she was sharing it to her friends like, ooh, look at, look at what's going on, which is fucked up in its own way. But now you're on TikTok where you know what the fuck you're doing. Well, and then it's hard because it's like she could claim, oh, I'm bringing it public so he can't get away with something like this again. And it's like, mm, I don't know, though. I feel like you're you're, you're bringing not the like hero of yeah, this. It was like, it, it, yeah, the hero complex here is a little too, too little too late. Someone basically commented and said, it's no secret he's been married for a decade. The only victim here is his wife and children, which I completely yep. agree yep. with. And she actually answered Lovely. this in a TikTok, Let's hear it. so. I just wanted to make a part two. Um, I feel like it's obviously necessary. <laughs> is it? Um, hindsight is twenty twenty. I initially wanted to go in and talk about how remorseful I feel and how embarrassed and disgusted I am with myself, but I didn't want people to look at it and think like, oh, she's playing the victim. But in reality, it had the opposite effect. Something I now realize I didn't touch on enough was the fact that um, one of my friends had attempted to sell it, um, which I realized yesterday whenever they reached out to me for comment. And so I was completely frantic. That is why that video is for one, just so all over the place and two, why I didn't touch on some of the things that I initially would have liked. So in this video, I would like to address some of those things. I only came forward because I wanted to kill whatever story the tabloid had. The most important part that By I did spreading the same one over is the fact that I was under the impression that their marriage was over. I believe that they were keeping it quiet to avoid the negative press because as I had said, I was new to LA. So I just assumed that with celebrities of that caliber that that's just how it was. And that's why I feel exploited because he knew I believed everything that he said because of my vulnerable position of being new to LA.
That line has gone viral and people have clowned her ass for that. It's like my vulnerable position of being new to LA. Jesus Christ, Girl, we what? don't live in like on Mars. Why are you acting like it's some foreign land that you, people have different Oh my God. She's obsessed with that scene because there's an LA like celebrity scene. And then there's people who live in LA Thank who you. don't Thank get involved. You. I feel in like that. that is one of the biggest misconceptions about LA. It's like, oh, when people move to LA, you guys know that LA is just a city, right? Like, not everyone here does YouTube <laughs> and inf like is an influencer at all. It's insane. And it's just like she's talking in the weirdest, like, what does that even fucking mean? Let's finish it, but I, I have so many thoughts. Straight from his verified Instagram account, I didn't have any reason to further question it. But I now realize that that was likely a manipulation tactic of his, you know, just hiding in plain sight. As soon as I had realized that was not the case, I had cut things off with him. In retrospect, I wish I would have questioned things more. I wish I wasn't so naive, but you know, being naive is not an excuse for what I did and the role I played in this. Again, in no way was I trying to gain sympathy and I fully realize I'm not the victim in this. I'm not the one who's really getting hurt here. It's Biotti and her children. And for that, I'm Don't so, say her so name. sorry. Don't say her name. I was just looking to see, to look up his um, account because like he posts with his wife often. So it's like, yeah, you he, couldn't yeah, be like, does. oh, well, I just believed him. I was just naive. Did you look at his Instagram? Because like July 21st, um, it's him and the whole family. He posts with her all the time. Well, first I want to say too, because we didn't touch on this enough when we initially heard it in the video. Adam Levine, you are a, an absolute, and I mean this with every fiber in my soul, you're an absolute psychopath for wanting to name your son after this yes, girl. Yes, yes, I agree, yes. And I, and I mean like, you need to be immediately incarcerated for this. This is a literal crime. Do you understand that I would never even name my children someone I knew in high school that it, I was not romantic? I mean, you and with. me were just having a conversation with someone yesterday about like naming a dog after someone you know and how that's weird. Yeah, so, it's like, weird. I don't it understand how you would get to the level that you'd be able to like make the difference in your brain that at what the girl you're cheating with you are diabolical also, that is so fucked. so she says in the video that they were seeing each other okay that that's what we need to we need to severely i mean get your number two pencils we need to severely investigate oh into this i mean we can't investigate much into it but we need to like think about this okay because here's where i stand when she said that when i heard her say we were seeing each other for a mm -hmm. year I thought, what the fuck does that mean? That's really vague. Like, you know, that that's it. That was my initial thought. To me, I was like, that, that doesn't is mean not enough. we were DMing for a year. That means there was something else. At the very least, if she hadn't met him in person, that's such a weird way to phrase that. Very much. Because you, I mean, <laughs> seeing each other via FaceTime. But the only receipts she provided were DMs. That's weird as fuck. And that makes me like think they don't have she numbers. probably doesn't even have his fucking yeah. number. Yeah. And that to me is very weird. Let's get into what she... There's so much here and I'm just so angry. My brain's not working properly. But she ended up going on her Instagram stories and addressing this a little bit more. Well, in between her advertising her OnlyFans. Stop um, From it. Costa Rica. Literally in between these slides, she's advertising her OnlyFans. Jesus Christ. So she posted and said, aware people are gonna try to fill in the gaps with many false assumptions. I don't feel like I'm doing any favors considering the manner this had to go about. It did not have to go about That's this such way, a weird but okay. way to phrase it too. It's a lot to digest, but hopefully at the very least, the truth being out can do some good. What good? You getting some extra money on your OnlyFans? I know. Then she reposted one of her friends who posted about her saying, and I'm posting about it just because I keep seeing, is this real? Is she doing this for attention yes it's real no she doesn't want the attention really mm, okay one of her friends tried to sell the screenshot she sent to the tabloid so she was kind of forced to come out with it no matter what you think of her we've been friends for a while and i can honestly say sumner Stroff or Stro, whatever the fuck, has always been a good person, but everyone makes mistakes, especially when someone rich and famous is telling you exactly what you want to hear, and she just said, I love you. So then Adam Levine puts out his statement, and that was today, mm -hmm. right? Which is Tuesday. A lot is being said about me right now, and I want to clear the air. I used poor judgment in speaking with anyone other than my wife in any kind of fl <laughs> flirtatious manner. I did not have an affair. Nevertheless, I crossed the line during a regrettable period in my life. In certain instances, it became inappropriate appropriate. What the fuck does that mean? I've addressed that and taken proactive steps to remedy this with my family. <laughs> what? My wife and my family is all I care about in this world. 
clearly. To be this naive and stupid enough, Oh, so now you're naive too? Just two naive kids in LA? To be this naive and stupid enough to risk the only thing that truly matters to me was the greatest mistake I could ever make. I will never make it again. I take full responsibility. We will get through it and we will get through it together. Are you talking about like we as like a fan base or like we as Literally, a family? Who is we? This is the weirdest statement. He also makes it seem like they didn't meet, right? Yeah. That's where he, I'm he getting from He very much is playing this off like it was a girl in my DMs. That was it. I think it's different for every single person's relationship, but my opinion is that emotionally cheating, giving someone that energy. I mean, he literally sent her DM saying, you're so fucking hot. Like, you know, shit like that. That to me is cheating, 100%. Yeah. That's even more annoying almost if he didn't meet her because it's like, like literally he's just like bored and wants some like validation so he's like insta he's 100%. messaging an instagram model and i think that it's such a shitty thing if you're gonna quote unquote take full responsibility then why don't you do that and cut out about 95 percent of this bullshit and just say i should have never fucking crossed that line and i am going to try to remedy this with everything i possibly can Cut out the fucking shit of, I did not have an affair, but I did cross a line, but I did him. Nobody fucking cares. Well, I mean, and like, what what do you define as an affair? Yeah, I guess it only matters to like his wife and him. But to me personally, like, especially the, the baby name thing, I know maybe to some people they're like, well, that's not the worst part. To me, that's the worst part because what the fuck? Like, that's like so ins Oh my God, it literally gives me goosebumps. It's like creepy fucking shit. Sorry guys, I know I'm very angry and we will move on from this segment and I won't be so angry after this, but as a mother, as a wife, like, I don't look through my husband's phone. I don't do any of that. We don't, we trust each other. How do you come back from this? Like, I genuinely want to know, and I'm not judging her for like staying with him. That's the father of her kids, whatever. I personally wouldn't. But that being said, every day you spend with your partner, right? Me and Nassim have been married for over five years now, which is insane. Every day we, there is not like an exciting day. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like we exist in lulls and just like normal human beings who sometimes are more romantic and sometimes are more like roommates. And so, you know what I mean? Like you go through all those stages with your partner and all of them are glued together by trust. Whether we're in a stage where we're like so over, you know, head over heels for each other again, for some reason we're like sparked up and we're like, oh my God, I love you. Or we're just like in a more like calm state. I trust that you're gonna respect me through all of that, you know? And how do you ever get to that place again where you can exist with trust when someone has disrespected you like this? Like when someone has literally been like, oh, you're so hot as fuck, your wife. <laughs> is the hottest person I've ever well, that's seen. What I don't, I mean, that's what? what I don't understand with a lot of like, I'm sure it goes the same way with women cheating some of the time, but it seems like so much of the time when men cheat, it's like, what was the better thing that you, like, why was the grass greener? Like, what, what did you need? His wife makes him look like a fucking <laughs> pale potato. Like she is so hot. They're in the same like realm that both Bahati, I don't bet, I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, but. Yeah, we're not um, really sure. Yeah. And him could probably message pretty much any random person and get attention yep. from them. So I feel like as a celebrity that is also very attractive and has this following, that's kind of something you need to be, like have another level of trust with your partner because it isn't a, like you have to go search for someone to cheat with. No, literally Adam Levine can be like, yep. Ooh, like let me do a blind scroll and just pick someone and anyone would be like, yeah, I'm down. He doesn't even have to scroll to look. He just has to scroll through exactly. his like message requests. People but are already reaching is, out like, to him. She could do, the wife could do the same thing. Is she doing that? Why does he have to do that? Like Absolutely. it's not, and again, especially if he's not even physically cheating, what did you get out of that? What's the point? This just in, uh, Adam Levine has messaged a million girls and we had to come back on <laughs> to talk about it. <laughs> Fuck. Um, breaking news update. There's 50 new girls. Like, we filmed this on Tuesday, and it's currently Saturday. You're seeing this on Sunday, and just so much has happened. I'm less angry today, so that's good. <laughs> Because I was so fucking angry when we, fil when we filmed. Well, I feel like now that there's been so many good memes, at least we've gotten some funny content out of it. So. Yeah, the internet has definitely interneted this situation. They have done their thing. Where do we start with this update? Uh, basically, I mean, it's the nature of this type of topic. Like other people started coming forward. Some were like, 
I get it. You're feeling like empowered because someone else came forward with something similar. And then some of them were just like right in the coattails hard, in my opinion, of this situation. It's just been so weird. Well, and there's definitely been a very mixed reaction to Sumner, which I think we touched on in the last one. But people have really taken like sides. I think some people are spending a lot of their time hating on her. Yeah. And then other people are like, why would you even pay any attention to her? It's him that broke his marriage vows, which I think that there's enough energy to go around. Yeah, that's the thing is like, why does it have to be one or the other? Can it be both? I was going to say, <laughs> it is possible to think they're both scum. Yeah, I get it because she obviously didn't take the marriage vows and she wasn't the celebrity in the situation. So we already talked about the power struggle and all that. I, we yeah, get yeah. that. But it's not like with essay allegations where it's like, okay, I get why you want to be public. I, I need to warn these other girls. Yeah. Like, Here it's like, no. what is the motive? You want to beat the TMZ story before it gets up? How's that going to help? Either way, it's going to be out. Like, you know what I mean? It's just weird. <laughs> well, yeah, that's honestly, she like wanted to like share her side before it broke. And I'm yeah. like, well, what do you think your side was going to be before? No one really cares that it's you. It's <laughs> so weird. So um, I've seen a few like additional messages in regards to this. One was wasn't messages. Uh, did you see the thing about the yoga instructor? Vaguely, that sounds familiar. Apparently he had a yoga instructor on tour with him and she's alleging that like he texted her that he wanted her to like get naked. He seems like he yeah. needs to maybe stop. <laughs> That's, I can you not. My mom asked me what this next episode was going to be about. And I was yeah. like, oh, mostly Adam Levine. <laughs> and she said something about him and she was like, yeah, it sounds like he has a problem. And I was like, yeah, but I also think he has the same problem as most attractive rich men. In all <laughs> a lot of people were talking about the fact that him and his wife were paparazzi recently. So it was like two days ago, three days ago, something oh, like that. Oh, no, I didn't see that. Yeah. And they were both smiling, having a good old time. And so people are looking into that and being like, well, his wife's fine with it. Why the fuck does anyone else care? Yeah, like maybe it was an open relationship kind of situation. Not fully, but like that he could message other girls. Yeah, I thought that, but then that makes no sense with his public statement. Like they don't match up. Why would you be like, you would just say, hey, you guys don't know my relationship. Because he needs to save face publicly. Like he's always portrayed himself to be like this really sweet, sensitive guy, I feel like. And it's like plot twist, maybe not. Which I mean, like if it is really okay within their relationship, then I would think that that would be the route you would go because yeah. the one he went, no one's going to really believe you regardless. Yeah. One of the things that came out that I found the most entertaining, <laughs> which at first I was like, wait, is that real? or did she photoshop that <laughs> oh my god you guys tana mojo <laughs> Oh, God, I know. She posted a DM that shows that he did message her, but then he unsent it because it still is asking if she wants to receive the message because she didn't follow him back. It's Tana, so like, who knows? But she was replying to people saying that it was real. Leave it up to Tana to be a part of literally every scandal on the internet. Like, <laughs> like how does she do it? Without even trying. I know. <laughs> She's like, oh, yeah, me too. <laughs> like, what? One of my personal favorite things is in the Sumner messages. So at the very top of the screen, you can see his um, let me pull it up for you because it's it's real good at the top here it says this is Adam talking to Sumner it says it is truly unreal how fucking hot you are like it blows my mind which Adam are you in high school <laughs> truly everyone has been like wow these are the text like that's how he texts makes him even less attractive oh my now. god the ick I got major ick with this but then also I realized that later on in the messages he says you are 50 times hotter in person oh well and that's what I thought that her said it's a seeing you in person I was like I'm fucked yeah so our whole speculation that we did when we originally saw everything we were like well it doesn't sound like they knew each other in person and he's saying that he was just basically having flirtatious messages no, they saw each other in person. This was physical cheating. The main meme on Twitter was that they took the top part of the it's unreal how hot you are and they just went with it. They started putting like, when I get my Totino's pizza roll out of the microwave and then they will put I've the picture. I've seen some Hot Pockets oh, ones. So good. TikTok went insane. Like there was one day I was scrolling my For You page and I sent all of them to Lily. It was just the most, so oh my God, the most hilarious fucking TikToks. Let's see some play, of them. Play the one. Yeah, no, this one. This one. This is my favorite, arguably. This is Pink comedy. <laughs> hey, buddy. What should we call him? Um, how about a... Uh, uh, that face. Uh, Sumner? Summer? Sumner. <laughs> Why? No, it just came to me. Looks like a... Looks like a Sumner. <laughs> 
Not quite as sexy. <laughs> what? <laughs> Nothing. So good. People really got creative with this. And I guess my conclusion in all of this is that they were both wrong. I think everyone who came out since, you know, there's some of them, like I said, there's this girl. Actually, let's watch it super quick. Um, I have a lot more that was said that was like not appropriate. Um, I just didn't feel comfortable posting everything. And I never even wanted to post any of this. Just like that other girl said, like the only way this would have ever came out is if somebody ever posted it. Um, a lot of my friends knew and they were shocked. Um, but I'm really happy and I have a really great life now. So, you know, just I guess if any other girls have experienced this with him, which I'm sure they have, I just think they should post it because I feel really bad for his wife and nobody deserves it. So the duck I face feel at really the end. Bad for his She's like, what? nobody deserves this. <laughs> well, and like, I feel really bad for his wife. Literally, you were in his DMs being like, well, we could just be friends, though. Ma'am, you're not going to be friends with Adam Levine. <laughs> Obviously, if there's anything that this situation has displayed, it's that Adam Levine definitely has a fucking issue with like attention or like insecurity or something of the sort that he just can't stop himself from like getting any and every attention and like giving it to other it's people as well. Yeah, it honestly is embarrassing. But like, this is also embarrassing, right? <laughs> like, this is also I, like, ee. So I've seen a lot, like, there's a large portion of people that have reacted to all of this as being like, why would you, oh my God, play the one thing <laughs> of the girl being like, you aren't going to find me admitting to Oh my God, that one was hilarious. Because that's how I feel. It's like, at one point, yeah, I'll, I'll admit that Adam Levine was like a hot guy, but I feel like for no, a few years I, I now, he's that. been pretty cringy. I will, not, I will absolutely not admit that. Okay, this TikTok <laughs> this is, is everything. Favorite. All I'm saying is, I'm not ruining my reputation just to tell y'all I fucked moves like Jagger. <laughs> I'm not ruining my reputation just to tell y'all I fucked I'm at a pay <laughs> Nah, <laughs> I'm not doing that. Sorry. Nope. Won't be me. Y'all would never get that out of me. Ever. Seriously, that shit would go See, to the I, grave. I'm in that camp. A hundred percent. Like, again, this is like not serious allegations. You're telling me that like you were too flirty with a famous guy who's married to a Victoria's Secret model. Like, what are we even talking about anymore? And then you actually sent this to me, but on Twitter, people were looking back in Sumner's post and trying to like pinpoint what she was posting around the time of the alleged affair, which was like well, not and, that long ago, right? This also plays into the like, oh, is she a victim that was manipulated? Or did she know quite exactly what she was doing and was enjoying it while it was happening? And then it eventually it was in. And then she got creeped out by the name thing and saw that was her in to yeah. make all of this public. Yeah, I actually think that was the trigger. I think she got creeped out. I didn't at first. But now that I look back, I'm like, I think either because they stopped talking for a while and then she kind of got maybe bitter about that. And yeah, then the baby name exactly. thing, she's like, it's oh, like fuck this. But people found that she posted this allegedly during the affair. We can't play the song, but it's a Maroon 5 song it's her like giggling and rolling on the bed to beautiful mistakes which people found out lines up kind of perfectly with when their supposed affair might have been ew yeah i think that's pretty much it there's definitely been some other texts and stuff that have come out but they all pretty much look the same yeah it, it's embarrassing he talks like a 12 year old and uh, it's literally like a ninth grader that's like, that's like never had sex like that's how he that talks. is trying to lose his virginity <laughs> yeah it's really embarrassing anyway best of luck to them and um yeah <laughs> moving on Anyway, let's move on because I'm genuinely sweating and so upset. And I feel like people are going to get mad at me. They're going to be like, Jesse, like, what the fuck? But like, it's so, is it not just so upsetting, especially to like my wife's and mom's out there? Like, what the fuck? Um, okay, so we have much more to talk about. I was going to say, I wish we were moving on to a lighter story, but this next one's um, kind of dark. But also, there are no details. I have been hearing, we're talking about Taylor Holder. So if you don't yes. know who Taylor Holder is, he is a TikToker. He used to hang out with, um, you know, Noah Beck, Bryce Hall, all of them. He used to live with I feel them, like I him and yeah, and I feel like him and Bryce Hall were like joined at the hip. They seemed like just like two yeah. BFFs. But then I feel like very quickly that changed. 
I started learning about this for this video, but I had heard whisperings about this in the sense that like I had heard that there were essay allegations against Taylor Holder and I had heard that all his friends unfollowed him and were like speaking out about him. Bryce Hall would go on like the BFFs podcast and yeah, talk yeah. some shit and people would just say things about him and that's all I knew. Well, I think it's interesting because even when I think, I don't even remember when I first saw Bryce Hall speak out about it but I think that's the first time I heard about any of the allegations which again I don't think we even know what the allegations are it's been very weird we'll get into that in a sec but I want to start by saying he even kind of frames the whole thing as like they weren't ever really that good of friends Bryce Hall does yeah and kind of more active, like they just got associated with each other because of their content. I think there's a range of types of influencer friends. I'm curious to know how they all function because it seems like a lot of that like younger group that got big on TikTok were all hanging out a lot of the time. And I am curious, I guess, how good of friends were they or if they were just posting content and then like they aren't really friends. Because personally, I've been around a lot of influencers and I've been friends with a lot, but I've never been like, oh my God, these are all, this is my group of best friends. It's like, as far as influencer friendships go, I feel like a lot of them do get played up for the screen. Basically what I'm getting at is they were a very interesting example of Bryce very much went from being like his right hand man to like ditching him instantly. This is so confusing. And because it involves SA, it makes it so much more complicated and strange. Mm -hmm. But I agree. I found it strange that his friends dropped him so quickly. Some people are like, that says a lot. And it could, but it also is like the internet's super fickle. I, like you said, you've never had that kind of group. I have had that kind of group before. Mm -hmm. Like when I was on Vine, the early, early days, it was very much like we're all hanging out because we're all on Vine. And it was so fickle. It was so like one day, you know, you were friends. And especially for me, like when everything happened, so many people dropped me like overnight. Well, because people don't want to hurt their personal brand. So exactly. I feel like that's the thing is everyone is very quick to be like, oh, well, we, ha we weren't that close actually, but 100%. it just like, feels like they'll do it in a second. When I was looking into this, the first thought that I had was where the fuck did these allegations come from? I keep hearing there's no victim that has come out. I want to be extremely careful on how I talk about this because it is essay and it's something that is not a game. It's not like usually not beneficial to speculate on usually, you know, whatever. No. But that being said, if that's true, holy shit. So I am definitely always of the belief, being someone who's been through it myself, I always just jump to believe the victim. Some people hate that. But there, but the, the thing is, is that there isn't a victim that came forward. So That's who are we the believing? issue. That's the internal struggle I have. Because not only is there not a victim that has come forward, there's not even a specific allegation. There's not even something where it's I not know like, what oh, it even he means. R worded me or he did this. I'll say right now, I don't, we definitely do not know. I mean, I'm speaking for you, but we don't know Taylor Holder. No. <laughs> and, and he seems like a douche. I, if I'm being honest, like one That's of those douchey TikTok to guys. Me, like he definitely doesn't come across as like the best person, no. but that doesn't mean necessarily also that he's like assaulted someone and I do find the lack of victim or actual allegation very hard to like, wh what are we talking about then? And why did all of his friends believe him? All right, here we are back again to clear some shit up because this was such a confusing story when we filmed it. I even though I had done research, I couldn't figure out where the allegations came from. Like, where did this start? And yeah. I had speculated on certain things, but still don't know, by the way, spoiler alert, but I have a better idea of like <laughs> somewhat the beginning of this. It's so bizarre because I feel like any other allegations, you're always able to know, okay, this is the person that, even if it's anonymous, this is the news outlet or whatever that broke the story on this day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is like impossible to trace back. It's so weird. But anyway. It seems like the allegations existed first just behind the exactly. scenes. Exactly. That's exactly right. Then people started talking about them as if they were this concrete thing, but no one had ever seen them. On February 1st, 2022, so it wasn't that long ago, Taylor Holder went on the BFFs podcast and it is by yes. far the weirdest interaction I've well, ever seen. So that's what, when I like was trying to skim through it when we were originally recording and trying to catch what he was saying, 
that's what I told you is like up until I watched that, it seemed kind of like these allegations feel kind of hollow. But as soon as you watch that, you're like, why is he so weirdly evasive and it's defensive so about all of this? Strange. He tries to like talk in like deaf noodles industry speak. Yep. So it's like, you know, like behind the scenes, we all know. We know what's going on. And it's like, sir, no, please tell us. That's why you're here. <laughs> oh my God, that's such a good way to put it. That's exactly what he does. But like he literally just keeps repeating the same thing. You know, it, just like, you know, we are, we're all on the internet, man. We, we see how everything works. You know, cancel culture is a thing. Everyone talks, everyone gossips at the end go. of the day. You know, there's a lot of stuff going on offline that should continue to be handled offline. And there's a lot of stuff that's sensitive topics that Why are you online I, I don't about agree about? with. And I will continue to handle offline professionally as, as stuff should be. You know, I think, I think going to the internet about every problem that we ever have is, 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 is a bit like, you know, it could be handled very differently, you know? So do you, no, I don't, do you know why? Everyone's up following you. Like, what I is, feel like what he was expecting you know, Dave Portnoy to be like, "Yeah, I get it, bro." <laughs> saying everything. There's a lot of there's a lot of assumptions. There's a lot of gossip. There's it's it's all everyone's opinion. It's all he said, she said stuff, you know. But at the end of the day, there's always a truth to everything. And like I said, we have you know I have great people around me, and we're going to continue to handle that offline and, and hope that everyone else does. And I'm sure manage, you know. The only question I would have for that, and, and I I really I've heard a little bit from Kareem, like you guys reached out to us. So, like, to be on and be like, we're going to handle it offline. Like, <laughs> yeah, like, I, as of 10 p.m., 10.30 last night, I was going to sleep. And Kareem's like, hey, Taylor Holder's people reached out. They wanted to come to, to clear shit up. I was, here to, I was here to answer any questions that you guys had. Um, you know, come forward. Everyone's like, you know, why, why has nothing been said? Why is Taylor not spoken up? Why is nothing? So I'm here to just speak up and answer any questions that anyone does have. Um, but, uh, you know, if there is no questions or anything like that going on, then I will continue to handle what I do know offline. What we're told is there's going to be sexual misconduct allegations, but that's pretty vague. And I don't know much about that could be totally false. It, it is vague, you know, and, and like I said, it's, it's, it's all, everyone has an opinion on everything that's going on, right? There's everyone talks in this industry and that's how it is. And if, and if it's something, you know, to that extent and that series, you know, I've, I've dealt with people that have went through stuff like that. It's something that I don't take lightly. It's something that I personally do not agree with. If it is something to that extent, I don't know why everyone runs to the internet. I think that it should definitely be something that's handled legally offline and very professionally. What you said is exactly how I'm feeling right now. So when we first recorded this, I was very much so like, okay, there's no allegations. There's no victim that has come forward and put out solid, this is what happened, even through an anonymous source or something like that. Yeah, no one's asking for proof. It just literally, there is no victim that has but come forward. But now when I see him, you know, literally being asked, hey, there's sexual misconduct allegations that are going to come forward that's vague and you know is that basically is that bullshit like his instinct isn't to say of course that's bullshit I would never do anything like that that's weird to me yeah. like why I was gonna say that maybe someone behind the scenes is kind of threatening him that they're going to come forward so he's trying to like clear the air before they do but Either that or I kind of get the vibe that he might have been coached through PR people or something in the scenario where it's like this is what you're gonna say because he just keeps repeating the same thing of like we're well, just gonna handle this behind the scenes so, so t like standard verbiage it for is. not answering when you can't answer, like when you're not yeah, supposed to answer. Yeah, because like now you see him in the video that we're going to react to in this video. Um, but he nowadays, when he's addressing this, is a lot more straightforward and is like, I didn't fucking do anything and yeah. there's nothing out there. So I'm just Which, confused. Is that because like now the threat has gone away of that person coming forward or because they... I don't know. Maybe, it, but it, it would also be weird if that's the case. Here's the thing. I think that all of these little TikTokers, Bryce Hall and Mads Lewis and all these people that go on the BFFs podcast and talk about this, I think that they're the reason this even got to where it's at. Like they met, they might have heard whisperings and, you know, behind the scenes or whatever, but they took it to like another level and made it this kind of like spectacle. I don't know. I, I feel like it's all so strange and unnecessary. I don't know. I, I don't know. It's all just, about this. Uh, it seems all so speculative that I don't understand how it I, d I do because I agree with you I think that they've all them all talking about it how they have has cr made it into this big thing yeah but it's it is strange that when you try to dissect it then you can't really I feel 
honestly conflicted covering this because of just the nature of it. I don't like to speculate on these types of topics. I don't think we need to speculate on what actually happened, obviously, because we won't, yeah. won't know until someone comes forward. But I do think it's important to discuss why this has become a thing and why there are problems with how it has become a thing. Yeah. Oh, well, speaking of which, so this that we're talking about, this BFF podcast with Taylor Holder, super vague interview, that happened on the 1st of February, 2022. And on the 2nd, none other than good old Keemstar himself takes it upon himself to make this tweet. Trusted source tells hashtag drama alert, Taylor Holder will be facing serious allegations from multiple alleged victims. Hashtag drama alert alert is still working to gather all the details. Normally would not even tweet this much at this stage, but Taylor confirmed allegations were made on BFFs. Thank you, Keemstar. Round of applause for him. He's just always, always breaking the news on hashtag drama alert. Can I just say how fucking ironic this is? Not me getting mad again, but like how ironic this is. This is a man, if you guys are not aware, um, who has quite literally uh, harassed me online for years, saying that I was not uh, essayed, saying that I'm not a trustworthy person, that it makes no sense that the man that essayed me would confess and that he wouldn't be in jail and just has literally dogpiled on top of me for no fucking reason, never met him, don't know the guy. The way that Keemstar decides to play sexual assault allegations to his benefit, like he only covers and defend, he only defends them if it interests him. I remember specifically uh, in terms of SA when he was covering the Jake Paul allegations, people always bring up that the girl speaks up because they want attention or something. And that never makes sense to me because the attention is never good. Never. You don't see a bunch of girls parading around that are super famous that are like, oh yes, hello. My, <laughs> my break into the industry was when I falsely accused this famous person of SA. That's well, not usually the, the thing case. Is too, it's like you have been so vocal against so many victims of SA over the years, uh, myself included. Hi, hello. In various like phases of the trial too, for him to be like, I wouldn't even normally tweet about it at this stage. Yes, you would. As a victim that you have shamed online, um, fuck you. Like literally yes. fuck you. Don't talk about SA. You're the last fucking person who should be reporting on things, especially with no facts. I'm not here to say that Taylor Holt or did or didn't do anything but like you don't know either and you're saying normally I wouldn't uh you know report on this stage well you're doing it so what the fuck are you even talking about and also you're hashtagging drama exactly. alert not once but twice drama alert's still working to gather all the details you don't fucking care about details at unless all. you were in the room at you all. seem I, I mean even if you weren't in the room you seem to always claim that you know what happened so I'm surprised that these are even allegations still Keepstar acts like he knows more than anybody else like more than me more than anyone there he acts like I was there, like I know what happened. I don't know where he gets the goal. He tried to say that the Jake Paul allegations couldn't have happened like physically it was impossible it's mind-blowing what's how weird stupid though when is. i was looking for this tweet i did find that he actually liked taylor holder so he was like tweeting good things about taylor holder like a year before this and like he was someone that he liked which so brings us back to what why does why was everyone so quick to turn on taylor holder that's the weird including all of, of his well friends. keemstar so that that's strange... not like a head scratcher like keemstar turns yeah. on anyone he used to be obsessed with h3 too and when ethan i'm more concerned about why uh, like Bryce Hall and all, all that crew suddenly were like, oh, bye. I don't know, because at the same time, like I do judge people when they're like kind of still close to someone who gets uh, like accused of something. I'm like, why would you want to be friends I with just, someone like that? We don't know who the victim is. That's the thing is like, even though Taylor seems like a douche and this all seems really fucked up and weird, there is not a victim that came forward and there's not, fuck the, there's not a victim. There's not even a traceable allegation. Yeah, it was like, there's not even a representative that came forward on behalf of the victim. It's it's so weird that we're even talking about it. I'm like, what are we even talking about? There's nothing. I don't know, because you could literally show me another video and I'll be like, oh, well, maybe. <laughs> I know. I guess maybe some of you guys, if you guys keep up with TikTokers, you can help us out to make more sense of this. If there's like more nuanced details that we're not aware of. Right now, from the surface level that we're at, it just is very confusing. And I want to not talk about it anymore. <laughs> if anything yeah. else happens, it seems we'll like it just you, a lot of irresponsible reporting on it that definitely. started with Keemstar and continued with all of the friends like talking about it like it was gossip. Which is consistent with Keemstar's legacy. Another thing also, though, that I thought was an interesting development in this is that so apparently Taylor used to date uh, Charlie Jordan, who's mm -hmm. another big TikToker who 
we don't know. We don't know um, anybody. I feel like we don't know any of this. We don't. I know. We know the older generation. Do we know this new no, one? I don't, I don't know anymore. She was dating him, and I feel like that's when I first figure out who he was. Was when they were together, and they had this nice little Instagram relationship. But apparently, they broke up. And what I found interesting, though, is after breaking up and after these allegations came out, I guess they've been seen together and are talking again. I don't know if it's, it has like a romantic connotation to it, but it feels like if the entire TikTok community knew that these supposed allegations are true, then why would his ex-girlfriend of all people be sympathetic towards him. Well, you know? it's interesting that you brought that up because this Mads Lewis girl um, on the BFF podcast, she talks about this and says that she spoke with Charlie when the allegations all came out. And Charlie was actually one of the people that unfollowed Taylor as well, like immediately with the whole group. So she at least publicly wanted it to come off that she... Exactly. Was against him and as well. then Maz talks about, you know, this is so weird because when I spoke to Charlie, she was very much like, oh my God, the allegations. Now she's like, I just, it's weird like to see her with him. She very much calls that out as like a weird hypocritical thing that Charlie did. But we said it last week. It's strange because Charlie seems like the last person if she thought there was any truth that she'd be back with Taylor, which everyone's saying. So it is a little weird. I don't know. I didn't really like Charlie Jordan in 2019, 2020. And then like for her to like know all the information know everything that's happened in the last few years i mean I, one one day one time when they broke up the first time i called this bitch crying like oh my god like da -da -da, i need you to know all this information like it's not safe da -da -da. and then she was like oh my gosh i feel for you like god loves you da -da -da. and then like all this information comes out and then she's just like back with him that's weird but again it's very high school very immature for this kind of situation yeah. and the severity of it well yeah the fact that they're all like on podcasts talking about it and not like talking about it how we're like talking about it trying to like see yeah. what's going on talking about it in the way that it's like they do know that something is happening well, and they're just not saying just it a, like a bare minimum level of like tact that needs to be used when approaching any sort of situation that has to do with SA like you have to approach it with a seriousness just that it deserves like in any respect whether you're the person yeah. that knows about it or not and we've talked about Cole Kerrigan on this podcast and talked about you know people mm -hmm. that use other people's essays as like a hmm gotcha like I know what happened That's that's not okay. And how much it diminishes what is actually important. Do you remember here? when Jeffree Star was like sharing that supposed like voice memo from the victim of James Charles to like everyone and was like, I have a voice memo that like really puts everything. I'm like, that's not your fucking story to tell. What? It's just not. Same with why I do find some questionable aspects of this because of the fact that if there really is a victim, why the hell, if they weren't willing to go to the cops, that's, I understand, totally, that is valid, but why would they go to Keemstar? <laughs> no, no, it's cops are the first option and then suck in is Keemstar. That's like literally the, the, the <laughs> levels that you go through when you've, yeah. Well, and if there is really something going on behind the scenes, if there is someone that is about to come forward legally or isn't coming forward legally, but you know they exist. If someone asked you about it on the podcast, and you knew that they were either not coming forward or they were coming forward. Either way, wouldn't you be like, you know what? I have no comment. I don't feel comfortable commenting on that right now. All the comments were like, she's so real. And I'm like, no, she's literally like treating Be a situation. Spilling the beans on other people's lives isn't no, being real. No, it's super disrespectful. And quite frankly, like she's acting like she's talking about like, Tuesday's lunch special at the cafeteria. Like, it's like, girl, this is someone's life. If you guys know more about the situation, please tell us, help us learn more. Yeah, if we like missed some kind of big aspect of it that would point us in either direction. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, it's not our no. mission to figure out who's lying here. I think he's fucked either way, yeah. I think. And the victim, I feel bad for if there is one. And if there isn't one, then I'm confused. <laughs> Okay, and lastly, we have an update that isn't related to any of the topics we discussed, but it does relate to the topics from the past two episodes. Don't worry, darling. <laughs> the movie we cannot escape. I was kind of shocked it just came out because I'm like, we've been talking, I feel like we've been talking about it so much. I'm like, it just came out? I know. And honestly, there's some like more drama updates that have come out, but I, I, I saw. I don't really, I didn't look into them anymore. And I just don't All really I know is that anymore. Harry and Olivia are dating and they were making out last night. Oh, yeah. Were they? Oh, yeah. There's pictures. Oh, well. Um, <laughs> but what I did want to talk about was the actual movie because I actually saw it in 
theaters yesterday. No spoilers, right? Are we doing spoilers? No? No, I don't think so. We don't have to. Okay. I could definitely go in and tell you about like the entire movie, but I don't think it's really necessary. Here are my takeaways. Um, Overall, I'd say I enjoyed it. Like it wasn't like I was waiting for it to end that it was bad or anything. Mm-hmm. But it felt a little long. It's two, the runtime's like two hours, five minutes. Oh, and wow. it yeah. definitely could have been like an hour and a half. Florence Pugh, phenomenal. Olivia Wilde, she is an act, she actually acts in it as oh, well. Oh, I didn't know that. She's like, she has a lot of great one liners. She's actually really funny. She has some good comedic relief and uh, she has some dramatic scenes too. She's a great actress. So that's never been my concern. But Harry. Good or bad? Tell me when to stop. I, I, your picture is really small because you're sh- still All right. sharing the screen. <laughs> but um, I'm not going to go as far as to say he should just quit acting. <laughs> Gasp, Lily. It's not like, he, no, like he, it's not like he's that bad. I think the he Harry Stones are going to come for you. Better. The first half of the movie, his scenes are just, I don't even know what character he was playing. Okay. Like, I mean, his character doesn't have a whole lot of dialogue to begin with, which I find it very odd that Shia LaBeouf, I'm not to play into Olivia's Instagram caption about how it's hard to find men to do roles supporting women, but it was like his role was very significant to the overall plot. Like he had to be there, obviously. But in terms of character development, oh my God, there was nothing. Really? If Harry wasn't attractive, I mean, you could have really replaced him with anyone. It baffles me that Shia was even in the running to do it because it feels like whoever did it didn't need to be an actor. <laughs> and I wasn't going into it being like, oh, let's see how bad Harry's gonna suck in this. Like, I really didn't have much expectations going into it. But I like found myself like watching him being like, he looks like he's like nervous acting. I think. He has some scenes towards the end after there is like a twist. And once that happens, it feels like, yeah, he got somewhere. But I don't know. It it just felt kind of like he missed. And what about, um, if you don't mind me asking, uh, the the female orgasms that Olivia was talking about? How was that? Honestly, kind of weird. Like what I thought. Very, (laughs) there was two sex, there's two like sex scenes and they're just not necessary. (laughs) As is every sex scene ever in history. Yeah, like it just felt like, okay, like cool. Was it even close to showing Harry's Willy Wonka? Oh God, no. No, not even close. I don't even think we see him with a shirt off. (gasps) Boo, what the fuck? The sex scenes, spoiler, are him going down on her one time when he like gets home from work. But like he doesn't, he's not undressed at all and she's not either. It's like he literally just like Like goes under her skirt. (laughs) Like pretty much, yes. And then there's like a weird scene where he's like, are we allowed to talk about that? (laughs) We'll find out. They're at a party and he like, they're in a other room and he's like, her oh. but no clothes are removed <laughs> from either of them all right so well. they both didn't feel particularly necessary yeah and honestly those were some of harry's main scenes like it didn't feel like he was even really in the movie that is so weird because like he's definitely in the movie right the whole movie feels like florence acting and then like a bunch of other people around mm. her and like she is acting good but it almost makes it weird because she's acting so intense and then everyone else feels like their energy level is like a little lower it's hard to say because i also didn't leave the theater being like that was so bad that was stupid but the more i think about it i'm like yeah, that didn't really make sense either. <laughs> um, I think that if you really love Harry Styles, maybe you should see it. All right, there you go. I was hoping to leave impressed and I wasn't. But it did make me want to go to Palm Springs. Well, already then. Anyway, let us know all of your thoughts in the comments below. Please I actually do. though we are really curious. Like I feel like usually we want to know your thoughts, but I think all of these topics have been very open-ended. So yeah. let's make it a discussion. And I think we are planning on doing a live stream next week. I think so. The fourth Dennis Noodles, <laughs> Def Noodles, Super Roast Battles. If you missed the live stream of the last roast battle, I just want to like clear this up because a lot of people were commenting this. We did private the live stream. We did the live stream through Zoom. We have no idea what we're doing, <laughs> which by the way, thank you guys so much for everyone who joined. We had such a blast. Lily got hammered, literally slept for like 48 hours after that. Why are we just acting like I was drunk? <laughs> Girl, I was not that drunk. I was like good to go. Like you were 
hammered. But anyway, so we had a really good time. You guys were very sweet. So we want to do it again. We're getting some help on live streaming much better and to not have technical difficulties like last time and to be a lot more professional. So sorry about that if you were there for the first one. Um, But after this, I don't know if we'll live stream roast battles only because honestly, and this is, I mean this in the most humble way possible. Yeah. One of the only things that was like happening in the roast battles was like Dennis was interacting with the people coming from our chat to his chat. Someone commented at one time we had like seven times the amount of viewers that we it was did, bizarre. Which I honestly for a second almost felt bad because we were taking viewers away from him maybe and then I was like no no I don't think these people would be watching anyway. well that's the thing so I think some people were watching because he didn't title his stream properly and they couldn't find the stream and that's like some people were like you guys are talking over the roast and I'm like guys we're drinking and that's reacting yeah like <sighs> if you want to watch the stream just go over to his thing so people were mad that like we missed certain elements of the roast I'm like guys we're just you know so if you want to see us react to the next Deaf Noodles uh roast battles you should be here we will do a premiere and all that stuff but um we will not be keeping it i don't think as permanent videos on the channel so we'll leave it up for like 24 hours after probably but we're not leaving his roast reactions up because i feel like at this point like we're giving him the publicity of it i don't want to say publicity because who the fuck are we but you know what i mean like we're giving his roast we don't want to encourage him to keep them going but exciting news we are totally exploring the opportunity to live stream episodes maybe once a month twice a month we want to do some episodes where we're reacting live to the chat to you guys reacting to content like we want to do those style shows um maybe like once a month like we want to start slow kind of like a happy hour where we're all like drinking together and you guys can send us stuff to react to and it doesn't have to feel super formatted and we can actually interact and honestly i would like to get to the point that we can like guest some people in occasionally the idea of that makes me want to die but yeah i hear you uh but we're just exploring new things so anyway uh tune in next friday or this friday if you're watching this because it's gonna be sunday so on friday yes 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 anyway that's it um cheers cheers we love you guys thank you and um we'll see you next week